Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today we are chatting with Laura Williamson, Executive Director of the Muncie Civic Theater. Laura has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Laura, for joining us today. Sure, my pleasure. So theater is so wonderful, live performance, there's nothing like it. Talk about the origins of Muncie Theater and the work that you do today. Muncie Civic Theater started in 1931 by William H. Ball, who was second generation Ball family. He was the artsy Ball brother, um, always going to Chicago and New York to see shows and having um, play readings and poetry readings and music recitals in their parlors. Um, and eventually they outgrew the parlor and they put together um, the bylaws of the Muncie Civic Theater and they started at what we know as Cornerstone Center for the Arts. Um, it was the Masonic Temple built in the 1920s um, in, a, in a beautiful theater that, that seats 700 people. And it was mostly plays. Um, and they hired directors to come in, but all of the talent, all of the, everything was volunteer, including the directors. Every, every aspect of the theater was run completely just for volunteer, but they had a very high um, standard of quality. And that was written into the bylaws that, um, and something that's something I really love about the fact that that wasn't just, um, we want to put on a show, let's, you know, um, dig out of our barns and our garages and see what we've got, but it was really with an eye for the, the best and, and using the word amateur, but with a, a very high regard for that word and, and all that it, it could bring. Well, it's, the, it's, it's regard for the artist, mm -hmm. right? Yes. The, the, the right. writers of, mm -hmm. of these scripts and, and the tellers of these stories, right. the actors, and the people who put together the tech that's, yes. that's uh, yes. so, so yes. important, right? <laughs> right? And the stage managers and mm -hmm. so on. It, it, it really is, it's an art form right. that is experienced by people in that moment. Right. And when that curtain yeah. comes down, that's right. the next the next performance is a different moment. It's a different experience. A hundred percent, right? Not only for everyone that put on the play, but for the audience as well. So talk about the, the importance of theater today. Mm -hmm given the fact that so many of us uh, absorb information through video, through mm -hmm. television, through our devices, mobile, computers, tablets, and, and we're even getting into 3D kind of things. Right, right. Why is live theater mm -hmm. so important still to, to our own artistic experience and expression? I think it's the human connection. I think that, um, as I have children, you know, and, and certainly we all love technology. We all love being able to watch a movie on our phone or have access to any piece of information we could possibly want. Isn't It's a wonderful time that we live in. But the danger is, of course, that we lose connection with each other and um, that everything is virtual, um, our, our likes, um, our self-esteem. I think that's what we're struggling the most with children who are branching into different aspects of social media, that they're experiencing relationships that aren't based on real things because they're not based on face-to-face, -face, right? And so um, live theater is all about that. It's as old school as you can get. Um, and as much as we do with technology, with, um, you know, like we're, we're getting into even on a, a community theater level, um, rear projections for sets. Um, so, you know, we, we're branching into technology and trying to teach that as well to children and kids so that they can, so it's not just the singers and the actors that can be a part of what we do, but visual artists and computer graphic um, people with those skills as well. Um, but it's the human connection of the rehearsal, um, the performance, and making that, having that experience of stepping into a role, um, finding what it is inside of me or inside of that actor that is like that person that they're playing and bringing that out and sharing that with an audience. And it's the accessibility of the art mm -hmm. to the audience and, right. the, and the audience's self-identification right. of being an, uh, being an artist. Yes. It is entirely possible while sitting in a theater mm -hmm. to think of yourself yes. actually giving that performance and, yes. and, and indeed many of your audience members have right. some association with the with mm -hmm. the artists who mm -hmm. are actually giving those performances. That's an excellent point. Um, we call that being witnessed. When you, when you see your story being portrayed, you feel witnessed in a sense. 
um, you feel heard, you feel seen, even if it's not you performing it, you feel that your story is shared by others, you're not so alone. Um, and I think, I think that's um, back to your question about um, theater in a time of increased technology is that we're trying to um, bridge against isolation, right? And so um, you could sit at home and watch a story, you know, beautifully produced in a film, or you could sit with people, perhaps strangers, but strangers in your town. And, and I think that's the piece, you know, is, is community. Um, I just directed a production of It's a Wonderful Life, and um, in the cast were four doctors of different um, specialties and completely random, you know, other community members it, it just of all different levels of socioeconomics. It's right? so rare that we mm. come together right. in a way that we we uh, bridge uh, our divisions, yep. our divisions of, of wealth, yes. profession, right. uh, race, religion, exactly. church, and yeah. so on and so forth. And and here right. you come together and you're you're together telling mm. a story. That's right. We're very aware of that, and and so we at the theater, um, we, we really do consider it a sacred space in a sense because because of those, um, all of those things that limit us, that do isolate us from each other are, are really sort of checked at the door. And we're very intentional about that and yet also respectful. Right. You know, it's a fine line. So when you talk about the founding of the theater, mm -hmm. the Muncie Civic Theater, right. it's not the Muncie Theater, That's it's right. the Civic Theater. That's right. Interesting, interesting idea. Mm. Interesting that it came, that its initial funding came yes. from the Ball Brothers, yes. business people. Right. One brother yes. says, wait a second, the yes. arts are really important. Absolutely. So they're, they're in here, the seeds of those ideas. Let's explore some of those sure. ideas in terms of how you mm -hmm. develop. You've already talked about the fact that you have people coming in from different professional mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, backgrounds and, right. and collaborating on this storytelling. Mm -hmm. Talk about the civic and civic theater. I've had the very great privilege to be a part of a renaissance of the theater. So um, like anything, there's periods of, whether it's a, a church or any organization sort of has you know, periods of growth and really great health of glory days. Um, and I think the, the 1980s were that for this theater when we look back at, at uh, ticket sales. And you know there was three channels on television, essentially four, in, including public television. And they're just, we were, live theater wasn't competing you know, for so many things. Um, and then in the in the 90s and early 2000s, there was a tremendous dip. And so um, my husband and I were not uh, living in Muncie at the time, but when we came, we started to get involved. My background was in theater. Um, it was it was a struggle. The theater was um, almost perhaps going to close. And so that question that you asked, you know, where is the civic in the civic theater, was what that really had to be asked. And so um, there had to be a change of mission and focus in order to bring that back in order and but and so then when you ask how has the community changed since you know since the last time of, of great health for the organization and it has changed a lot um, and in some ways for the better but in many ways um, increased poverty um, and increased divisions in terms of race and um, just different aspects of our community being isolated from each other. Um, we are located in the center of downtown. Downtown itself had recently experienced a renaissance that we had the good fortune to be a part of. But we had to really ask ourselves, um, what aspects of the community are we going to tap into? The, the, um, the, the, the folks that are already going to New York and seeing shows in Broadway, are we, are we playing to them? Are we trying to educate people? to what good theater well, could be. What's your broadest, bro broader yeah. purpose, right? right what, exactly. What is the meaning yes. of life? You know, yeah, right. if you, if you yeah. look at our lives mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. and you look at it very analytically, very dispassionately, right. facts will tell us certain things. Right. We need food and shelter, right? right? right. We right. need some sort of employment, some sort of income. Right. Um, we can connect through all these devices, sure, so sure. we can we can sort of stay in our own little areas. Uh, we can go shopping at the Walmart or right. at, the, at, at the large uh, big box store. You can get, order anything you want online. You can get order yeah. anything you want online, <laughs> you but we don't really have to communicate right. all that that much. Yeah. We really don't need a city center, right? Right. We don't. We, right. we don't really need one. Mm. We don't really need to come together at all. Right. So now we look at that life and what an impoverished experience that right. would be. Yes. 
Right. So, so now yeah. we can start to think, okay, yeah. well, maybe this joyless, analytically pure, mm -hmm. uh, boring existence yeah. is not really for us. And then you have a response, mm -hmm. and you're a part of the response, aren't mm -hmm. you? We have been. Um, our board of directors has been um, incredible. Um, we not only just to to keep live theater relevant, and but we've also renovated what we're in the oldest city block. And so that, that experience has been amazing. Um, it was a general store. Um, it was literally Muncie's first city block. And the, the, it is so strange to me and so it's a wonderful um, thing that we as a nonprofit community theater own an entire city block, a blessing and a curse. Um, it was built in 1880. And so as the roof was leaking and as the foundation was crumbling and we began to just be relegated to um, parts of it that were safe. Um, and so th at that point, it was really uh, these two storylines. We have the building and then we have, you know, uh, how do we how do we encourage our community, you know, to to want to have live theater, right? Is it worth it? Community cohesion. That's right. So, That's right. so how did that process look? Did you go yeah. out to the community and start to solicit opinions? We did. We did. We did a feasibility study to, to see, you know, to put, try to put a dollar figure on um, if we could do this, if if someone should buy the building and we become their renter and we just put on shows because that's what we do. But we had this, we had two programs that we had already started, that we had committed to. And in, in the, you're asking incredible questions because these are the same questions that we were asking in terms of um, who are we, who, who were we, who are we, who do we want to be? What are we about? Absolutely. And we changed our mission to be the theater for the whole community. So not just um, a artistically savvy segment, but the whole community. Um, so that meant that we had to take on accessibility. The building was not accessible to all people. Um, and also children. You know, we really wanted, we believe in what we're doing. Um, we want this place to be around 50, 100 years from now. And, and so our youth program was the thing that we said, yes, we, we need more space. We need all the space. We believe that we can fill every single one of these rooms um, with live theater with children and with a program that we call barrier free theater which is for people with developmental disabilities and they they come once a week for nine months led by a drama therapist and at the end of that time um, they have written an original two-hour show it's using a theater process for healing and for you there's a lot of rehearsal for life so uh, memorizing a script um, there's all kinds of marginalized populations that drama therapy deals with i'm most interested in um, at-risk youth giving people especially children teenagers um, an opportunity to step into um, a new story something that is different than the reality that they're in and sparking that imagination and giving them the chance to imagine a different life um, and something that comes from within themselves. Well, Laura Williamson, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Muncie Civic Theater and thank you so much for your insights. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much.